who can be like J.P. Morgan's Island Resort. Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island. Off the coast of Savannah, Georgia. Off the coast of Savannah, Georgia. In 1913. In 1913.
not help. Since World War II, so now, on to World War II. Since World War II, the U.S. government has expanded its reach with a shocking voraciousness both at home and abroad. So in one war after another, it's the Cold War, the Korean War, the Bay of Pigs, the invasion of the Dominican Republic, Vietnam, endless involvement in the Middle East, in addition to wars on Nicaragua, Salvador, Bosnia, and Haiti, as well as wars all around the world conducted in the name of the War on Terror. Can we call it War on Poverty already, people? After every major crisis, whether 9-11, the dot-com disaster in 99, or the economic meltdown Jonathan Lewis so eloquently just explained in 2008, the response is more monetary expansion. Crisis equals more centralization. Every time there's a crisis, they tighten up. So, just uh, a couple of articles in the Constitution that you can take for what you will. I'm not going to call this unconstitutional, but you can just, you can hear what, uh, what the country's supposed to be based on. So, Article, uh, Article 1, Section 8. The Congress has, shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and exercises to pay the debts and provide, etc., etc., to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and of foreign coin and to fix the standard of weights and measures. I'm here to tell you the Congress isn't doing that. This building is doing that. This building is one of 12. Two thirds of this building are underground. There's a salon and a gym. There aren't any windows. But this whole thing is really creepy, guys. Okay, so we go on. Um, Article 1, Section 9. This is one of the most important parts. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appropriations made by law. And a regular statement and account of all the receipts and expenditures of all public money shall be published from time to time. It goes on to say in that same section, only gold and silver. If we had stuck with gold and silver, we wouldn't have the, the enslavement system that's in this country of the classes and the debt, but also the globalized entire, entire picture, the entire planet. members of Congress. No one knows about this stuff. It's completely unregulated. It's this quasi-legal, it's a completely illegal marriage between the federal government and the private bankers. And they own us. Everything that you see, we're all paying mortgages on back to banks. The banks own every building that you can see in America. And the reason that they do that is because they get money from the Federal Reserve that was printed out of the thin air. Not only did they print it out of the thin air, they charge interest on it. Fractional reserve lending means that for every dollar that they give you, they can charge you another nine dollars. They're making 90% on every dollar. And so they own every single building that you can see, and it all came from thin air. They're a company and their product is debt. They say build your credit, they mean build your debt, build your enslavement, like contract with us. That's what we're selling you. Their marketing is the dollar, that's their billboard, and the vehicle that they use to enslave us. I'm not being dramatic. This is the lender of last resort. This, is, this truly is, we are at the end of the road. Okay, so uh, 15 trillion in debt deficit growing, growing exponentially. Um, in 1907, that was the big crisis before 1913 that every that like got everyone on board to go with this security regulating happy thing that's going to prevent boots and busts and blah blah blah. J.P. Morgan was putting a ton of money into that that campaign and into those banks to keep them afloat. Just like today, when he's funding 10 percent of the of the law enforcement in New York City, it's so crazy. Um, since uh. Treasuries, T-bills, China owes us. Um, <laughs> so yeah, basically the <laughs> Pro okay, this is this is the big picture. I'll end here. I really want you guys to go home and research this on your own. Please research the cre the creature from Jekyll Island. It's a great book. But basically there's this thing called productivity data. And that's like where the actual tangible wealth is being generated by we the people who are supposed to own this country and this government. Tangible wealth is created in one of several ways. It's mined, it's grown, it's manufactured, it's intellectually manufactured, it's so Steve Jobs, whatever. So the European, European Central Bank and the Federal Reserve, two earth institutions that are like the huge global banking cartels, they own all of us. And so they say they print out money out of thin air. We go to them to buy.
liability or take out a mortgage and they own us and they lend us this money and then we are their slaves and then after that they tax us and they, gen they take this income that we have generated and we have worked for and they take it and they keep it and it goes up and up and up and up but the big thing the big connect is between this building and the wars that are going on all over the globe this bloodshed couldn't happen this war this like it's it's one big international central banking system, the business, the Bank of International Sentiments, BIS, over Europe and the Federal Reserve, our United States, our United States Bank. But it's not a bank. They're providing all the money for all the guns and all the bloodshed and all the wars, and it's all for their personal interest. A lot of these points I took from a speech that was written so that we would come here, that we would come here originally on October 15th. And it was written by Chris Dorsey. I think it's something to say about the Federal Reserve. That is all. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Lyrics by Woody Guthrie during the Depression. Sorry, sorry. Music sorry. by Wilco fairly recently. Can we hear, can we hear some points real quick? But first, we can hear some points real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, we can come back. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I'll speak up a little bit. Uh, that's the uh, Federal Reserve Bank, Richmond. Uh, it's run by a man named Jeffrey Lacker. Uh, Jeff Lacker is a fugitive from justice, as Megan pointed out. The, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank exists in violation of many parts of the U.S. Constitution, mostly Article 1, Section 8, and, which is the enumerated powers of Congress, and Article 1, Section 9. Uh, Megan mentioned the Bank for International Settlements, which is located in Basel, Switzerland. The Bank for International Settlements is the umbrella regulating arm of all the private central banks in the world. So when the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a privately owned corporation, makes a decision, which is the only thing that controls the economy of the United States, they set the uh, employment rate through interest rates and inflation, which you know, which is the only thing that controls production, which is the only thing that controls employment. They fund every single war crime that's being committed by the United States government overseas right now. Anything that anybody has a problem with that the United States government does is funded by the Federal Reserve Bank. Also, the Federal Reserve Bank makes coordinated moves with all the other private central banks in the, of the world. For example, the European Central Bank and the, and the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, they make coordinated moves. They lend out trillions of dollars in currency swaps to one another, and nobody has any idea what, as Megan said, what the interest are on the loan is, what the collateral on the loan is, or exactly how much money they, they, they put in currency. They create money out of thin air, and they devalue the currency. Uh, estimates are that the currency, our U.S. dollar, which is what we buy and trade in, what we get paid in, what we pay for our services in, has been devalued 12% just in one year. This is getting ready to collapse, and the people who are making it collapse, the Federal Reserve Bank, and the Bank for International Settlements, and all the other private central banks that have the same owners. And Megan mentioned them before. Warburgs, Rockefellers, Rothschilds, that's the key. They seem to be at the very top when you follow the money trail. But they do such things, the Fed does such things as create the more, you know, the toxic mortgage derivatives market, which is $600 trillion of toxic assets, which is turned into profit for the bank. So when the bankers start giving out predatory loans and they know that the mortgages are going to be bad, instead of taking a haircut, which is what they call it in the business, they just turn that into money. So they create a system in which they cannot lose. Only we can lose. We're the only ones that can lose. The top 1% or the top 15% or the top 20%. Whatever the ruling class is of this country, they are given their place in society by the Federal Reserve Bank. And if you extend that bank, 
into something called the Bank for International Settlements, which was formed in the early 1930s. And the purpose of that was to fund the so-called Axis and the so-called Allied war machine, which, as always, comes from the same spot. These banks, they fund all sides of all conflicts. It's not our bank versus another bank. It's the Bank for International Settlements, funding the Germans, funding the Italians, and funding the British, and funding the Americans. All they did during the so-called Second World War was transfer funds between London and Berlin, Munich and New York. They fund all sides of all conflicts, and that's the umbrella regulator of the Federal Reserve Bank, which is called the Bank for International Settlements. So the, the American people don't have any say in what controls every aspect of our life. We can't, we can't get an apartment through goodwill. We don't get a job by, by, uh, uh, by, by being friendly to one another. It's all based on money. And we have no, absolutely no control over our monetary system. And this is allegedly the law of the land. But the U.S. government okay. has nothing to do with the functioning of the Federal Reserve Bank. That is a violation of the law. If we're going to do anything, we might as well make the people in charge of our government abide by the rules that they set forward for themselves. And if they do, don't, we should hold them accountable. The people in charge of our government and the people in charge of the bank that runs our government, they're fugitives from justice. Nothing is going to change until we gain control of the jails and we start putting them in jail instead of putting people in jail for driving on a suspended license or possession of a gram of marijuana. We need to do something besides just sit around and talk. It's time to take action. These people have violated the law. They have committed treason. And we need to do something about that. And at this point, what I'm advocating is that we start demanding enforcement of the law, which will solve all the problems we have. We, there will be no wars of aggression, which also violates Article 1, Section 8. There will be no more torture. There will be no more there will be no more private central banks, which controls everything. And uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Bank for International Settlements controls the Federal Reserve Bank. It's an international bank. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm Phil with the Defenders. Hey, Phil. I just heard two diametrically different views of the Fed. They may sound similar, but this is the difference. One view is that the Fed is an instrument that was set up by the 1% to take the flow of money, the control of money, out of the hands of the 99. That's one view. The other view is that the Fed is run by an international cabal of bankers, primarily Jewish. That's the right-wing Nazi view. The right wing is opposed to the Fed, the left wing is opposed to the Fed. Please distinguish between those who say that the Fed is the top of the pyramid. It's only a tool. If it wasn't the Fed, it would be something else. The 1% goes on and on. But the view that the U.S. monetary policy and wars are controlled by an international collection of bankers is the view that's been promoted since Henry Ford and the Nazi party after him and the Tea Party today. It's a right-wing view, and please don't be fooled. Thank you. Mike Chat? Mike Chat? Mike Chat? Is that a good march? Yeah! I'm feeling it. So the day is not quite over yet. We've got a little bit of food over there that we can all partake in real quick, and then we've got a human university coming up next. Where we've got like six or seven speakers who are going to talk about some of the various issues that Occupy Richmond has been addressing over the last almost two months. So thanks for being well, here, y'all. we got a little food. I, Go I grab a little bite to it, eat. But I'm just then we're going to listen to some cool talks. So thanks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.